Track's second Racking Basics presentation designed for entry-level installers and designers. In this part two, we're going to cover some engineering and code compliance, which includes system grounding. The roof zones are about the additional turbulence that is created when the wind hits the wall and either goes up to the edge of the roof or mixes from two sides in the corner. The minimum distance here is 3 feet and the actual distance is 10% of the entire width of the building. You may rack modules in roof zones 2 and 3, edges and corners, but you may need to attach more often because of the greater turbulence. It is very important that the array does not overhang the edge of the roof or the roof peak, like this. Great photo. I'm sure these are not still in place. This one is clearly exposed to all the elements, and I think this whole row is above the roof peak. The basic wind speed is established by ASCE 7 and is much higher than most homeowners would expect. They can sometimes be calculated differently for hurricane-prone regions and by building occupancy. And there are currently two versions of ASCE in use. Please consult the local building department for the design wind speed that they expect you to design to. Surface roughness, which used to be known as exposure zone, is about whether the wind has a chance to really pick up speed as it's barreling down on you. In surface roughness B, you have house size buildings and trees, which will slow down the wind. Roughness C is open terrain, basically an open field. And D is fairly rare. It is either right by the coast or on an ice flat, which doesn't give you any protection from the wind building up speed. Snow or ground snow load in pounds per square feet varies not only across the states, but within a zip code. Occasionally you'll get the information back that in Colorado there's zero snow. What that means is that the program is seeing more than one snow load for a zip code and is therefore not giving you one at all. Again, before you install anything, check with your local inspector that you're using the snow load that they are going to want to see. Snow may be reduced for slope. In ASC 7, there is a formula that reduces the amount of snow that will sit on a tilted, slippery surface. Nearly all jurisdictions will accept this. Again, it's up to your local inspector. Seismic design criteria, ground acceleration or earthquakes. It's now considered that the entire US has the possibility of some seismic activity. The way to handle that with a ground mount is to use cross braces so that the seismic activity, which could come from any direction, can be at least checked. And on a rooftop with a ballasted system, it may be handled by setbacks from the edge of the roof or any obstructions. American Society of Civil Engineers 705 and 710. 710 is gradually being adopted across the country. It does show higher basic wind speeds. However, when we combine the loads, we take a percentage further down the line and the effect on the modules is not dramatically different. In North America, the PV system must be grounded separately from the electrical ground. It's designed for either a fault or lightning. And UL2703 requires that the entire system, that's the modules and the racking together, be tested for bonding and grounding of the system ground. If you're using an integrated system that has bonding built into it, then you normally would need to add only one lug and one bare copper wire to ground for each continuous row of modules. Ballasted systems may also be integrated bonding, that is, everything is bonded together. However, you still do need to run one lug and one bare copper wire to ground. Occasionally, an inspector will want more than one on a large array. With our solar mount product, the fangs or teeth 
will create the bond between the two modules and also the serrations create the bond with the racking so that we have UL2703 showing that everything is bonded together. Our L feet are even bonded with a serrated T-bolt that bonds the L foot into the racking and the whole system. And our splices are now self-bonding. No need to jump across the splice because if these are torqued properly, the bond is being carried from this rail through the splice to that rail. Thank you for attending this Racking Basics session. Please check our other presentations at unirac.com and if you have questions, contact us at info at unirac.com.